A warm welcome to all our viewers to our series, Natural Medicine. I have a guest here today that I've been following for over 20 years. For me, he has the reputation that if you are seriously ill, you have to go to him. Not just the Swiss, no, there were patients from all over the world who kept coming to see him. And it's, it's also a great honour and joy for me that this great man, in my opinion, is here in the studio today. And with him, I will address the topic of arthrosis today. Does arthrosis always have to be operated on or can it be treated in other ways? Stay tuned, we'll get started right away. Now, you must be curious to see which gentleman's here. Well, you definitely know him. It's Professor Dr. Thomas Rao. A warm welcome, dear Thomas. Thank you for the honour of your visit and thank you for allowing me to dive deep into the problem of, of arthrosis with you. Perhaps for those viewers who don't have arthrosis, what is arthrosis? Yeah, thank you very much for allowing me to speak here at all. Arthrosis is a degenerative process, a process of wear and tear at the joints. I don't know how many hundreds of joints humans have. Of course, some are involved more often, others are less involved. And with, with arthrosis, the degradation processes increase too quickly. The cartilage wears away. And at some point, the cartilage that should also create mucus, like the oil in the joint, does it less and less. The joint becomes drier and more abrasive and can thus get abraded. At some point, there will be bone on bone. That is the final state. The whole thing leads to an inflammatory process, an irritation in this joint, and that causes the pain. Now, there's a similar word, arthritis. Can you tell me quickly what that is? Osis is degeneration, itis is inflammation. The inflammatory process then simply predominates. At the beginning of the development of arthrosis, this can merge and the arthritis, the inflammation, which then also leads to a swelling of the joint with synovial fluid in it and such can still predominate. Well, arthritis is always the first thing and if at some point you don't stop, then arthrosis really comes along bone on bone. Now it will be difficult to treat it. Most of the time it is not bone on bone. Very few people who come have this final state. The arthritis then produces the irritating, over-acidified mucus. And this irritates the very, very sensitive tissue mucous membranes, interwoven with nerves. So that's where the pain comes from. It's actually a nerve pain that occurs in the joint because of this inflammatory mucus. But now I've heard the word over-acidified. Actually, if that's already the case with arthritis, it should be counteracted from the beginning by reducing this over-acidification. Yeah. I, I always say arthrosis is a metabolic disease. I know this is crazy. Why crazy? From the point of view of academic medicine, arthrosis is a degeneration of articular cartilage and then just wear and tear. No, but it wears out less depending on the metabolic state, hyperacidity state. If you deacidify the body, a term that unfortunately does not exist in academic medicine, if you deacidify the body, then you will have less pain. This is also an important process for us, that you deacidify people in general. Then they have fewer joint problems, connective tissue disorders, muscle discomfort. Everything increases when the body is more acidic.
If you deacidify the body with base products, with a, a different diet, by avoiding sugar, because sugar acidifies the body, by avoiding animal proteins, the more meat you eat, the more acidic you are, and the more you cause a degeneration process, also in the joints and in the back. We also have arthrosis in the back, namely all the back problems. Spondylarthritis, spondylarthrosis. Each vertebra has four small joints, and these can also be arthritic. And these joints have tremendous strength. The, the whole human is built on these little joints of these vertebrae. It's amazing that we don't have much more arthroses in the vertebrae or spondylosis. It's actually amazing. Before we really dive into arthrosis again, I'd like to take a look at acids and bases again. You're also FX mayor doctor, and recently the physicist Dr. Dr. Henning Sartor was here. Or also Dr. Probst as a physicist. We, we keep talking about that. Acid is defined as a lack of electrons. And if, of course, there is hyperacidity, I have a lack of energy, like an empty battery. And this actually promotes the inflammatory processes and the entire degeneration. And the counterpart there is actually the electron surplus, actually the bases that supply the energy. It really should be in balance. Did I explain that correctly? Yeah, well, <laughs> partly. <laughs> no, it's true, but the, the acid is actually an overload, so an excess of H plus ions, of protons. If we have too many protons, then one speaks of an acid, chemically speaking. And you can counteract that. Now, I agree with what you said. The electrons that you have to give more to the body... Now, I want to make another loop. I remember a Nobel Prize winner, Otto Vorberg, who just said that all diseases come from acid. Also cancer. Yeah, he got the Nobel Prize after all because he was right. And he said... What, what he actually said is that too much protein, the oversupply of the body with proteins, causes over-acidification, and this excess protein promotes cancer. Now we have a Nobel Prize winner who said something that is correct. Mm -hmm. And where are we today? Did we somehow implement what he said there? Not at all. Not at all. What he said, Professor Vorberg, was that the interstitium, all the fluid in and around the cells, after all, humans have a huge amount of liquid, over 80% is assumed to be water, so to speak, so a lot, and if this water, it's not just water, this, this liquid, this interstitial fluid is saturated with more protein, with more amino acid, I repeat, amino acid. Yes, I heard the word. When we eat proteins, they are broken down to amino acids in the small intestine. Over amino acidity, hyperacidity, and these acids disassociate. H plus goes away, and that then makes the pH, which just gets too low or is slightly too low. The body somehow tries to bind it and then takes out minerals. In academic medicine, this is not in any way taken into account. Arthrosis medicine, let's get back to the basic topic, arthrosis medicine has been completely over-engineered, over-specialised. And the patients have this misconception that if they have knee problems or other kinds of joint problems, they should go to the so-called specialist. No, they should go to a rheumatologist. Unfortunately, most of them are not holistically orientated either. I can say that because I'm one myself. But 
they would basically have to change their metabolic situation. Well, the patient comes to me. Now, I've been told I need to have a knee prosthesis or a hip prosthesis or God knows what. And I have so much joint pain. When the patient comes, I give the base infusion, because something has to happen. I give the base infusion with bicarbonate, which is a substance, it's soda, so to speak, which I then give in infusion form, very alkaline, that immediately binds those H plus ions, and the body is being deacidified. After an infusion, they already have fewer knee problems. It's incredible, and, and when I tell them, but now you have to keep taking base remedies, you have to eat differently, we get to what you said, the, the electrons. I give them the minerals, which these electrons also make available. <coughs> then they already have a significant improvement in their symptoms. And they can walk again because it hurts less. But it's sad. There's an incredible number of surgeries being done instead of actually deacidifying the milieu and tackling the pain where it is. I don't usually polarize, you know that too with all these questions about what academic medicine does well or not so well. But I really do have to polarize here. Most surgeries and artificial joints are not necessary. Most disc surgeries that are done are not necessary. Because you can reverse that. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Another question, if someone has knee problems and pain, can you also give an electrolytic infusion into the knee to take the pain locally right away? Do you do that? We've never discussed joints with each other, so this question isn't set up. <laughs> uh, but yes, of course, is the answer. And then I do something different. Now we get to biological medicine again. What is going on here locally? We have this acidification process, just the liquids. I'll say the knee now, it can also be the shoulder, the elbow, the thumb joints, it can be different. They have too much acid there, the patients, and I can bind that with base agents. That works for an hour. It's physics. That's physics, yeah. With this, I can improve the situation almost immediately. The patients are then amazed, oh, now I can walk because it works now. But in the long term, we have another issue. We need to rebuild the cartilage tissue and we have to normalize the joint mucous membranes again that they form normal oil. Well, it's not oil, it's this synovial mucus. We can only do this by nurturing them. And now there's something really awesome that we're doing. It's not my invention, we were allowed to adopt it. There are certain advanced orthopedic surgeons who do it, the platelet therapy, platelet extraction therapy, PRGF, that is platelet released growth factors. The platelets, the thrombocytes of the body, bind the growth factors. They go everywhere in the tissue and ensure that regeneration can take place. The growth factors which are produced in the bone marrow, in the spleen, in the liver, partly also in the muscles, these hormone-like molecular substances that are bound by the blood platelets and are present in the body on the platelets. We take the blood from the patient, centrifuge off the platelets. These centrifuged platelets are filtered again and centrifuged again. 
And so we get the growth factors away from them, human growth factors. And then they are injected locally. I inject them into the joint. That means that cartilage is then built there. There's cartilage coming up again. Nonsensically, people are made to believe what is wrong. That cartilage does not regenerate. How did you get to 60 years? Every cell is renewed every seven years, and this cell renews itself because it is stimulated by growth factors. Now, the patient comes and has these degenerative processes, meaning their knee doesn't regenerate like it should, because it's always in this sour source, improper nutrition of the joint mucous membranes and cartilage, and it's no longer renewed. An acidic tissue no longer regenerates and gets older. It ages faster. So I make it basic. I make the whole body more basic. Very simple. And I inject these growth factors into it. I could easily show you 50 patients who have been told we need to do a knee replacement. This is only useful for the orthopedist. And who can walk down scree slopes again today? So really heavy strain, they can do hikes virtually without pain. I'm not saying that you can fix every arthrosis that way. Not everyone gets there. There are such advanced forms of arthrosis where it doesn't really work. But for most people, this platelet concentration therapy and injection works. But what you may now say even more clearly is that they come out really regenerated, that they have to change their circumstances, otherwise the game will start all over again at some point. Any metabolic disease is a long-term issue. And it's an advantage if these patients are not just going to the doctor and accept, I'm getting a new joint now. I hate this passive attitude, but most of them do that. In our family too, I know those who never wanted to know anything, never. Never. A new hip joint is inserted, done. So, and now we continue to eat pasta, Ovaltine for breakfast, cheese, milk without thinking about it. It's a question of when the next hip comes along, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, of course. But it's, un it's comfortable, no change. <clears throat> it's a bit of a societal issue. Fix it. Quick, quick. I can't change the world, but I can help my patients massively. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It depends on the diet, whether people get arthrosis, whether they get back problems. Uh, do you know that yourself? I am relatively well behaved in terms of nutrition. My colleague, Dr. Kotaus, is a lot stricter than me in terms of nutrition. But if, for example, I drank two or three glasses of white wine and then ate cordon bleu or God knows what, and maybe a, a cheese platter afterwards, excuse me, then even I would have knee problems and back problems. If I did this for a week, most people do that all the time. Then the metabolism changes and you get the pain. If I stop doing it again, it will get better in a few days. Because the milieu, this metabolic situation, also causes the pain, also makes the acidity. It's so easy. If I hear it like that, you would have to have more physics in school because there are two big sciences here, medicine and physics.
that would actually complement something incredible. If they talk to each other, the only question is whether a simple solution is really requested. Because to administer bases, to get someone pain-free or healthy, is something that just doesn't cost anything, right? There's no lobby behind it either. Yeah. Dear patient, do you have knee problems, joint problems, back problems? Then you have a metabolic problem. You can buy base powder, you can buy minerals, you can just change your diet a bit. By not using cow's milk products, this is the main source of proteins, and do not eat sugar products. And then you've already done so much. After four to six weeks, you will feel better. We'll do the rest for you when you come to us. In fact, millions more could be saved. All the unnecessary joint surgeries, all the unnecessary anti-rheumatic drugs that are only given as symptom remedies, anti-inflammatory, but the inflammatory processes inside people can be changed so easily. Of course, it doesn't work overnight. It takes a few days, but after a few days, you can feel an improvement. Really, the arthrosis treatment is very simple, really simple. I was originally in rheumatology. Of course, I only had patients like this 30 years ago or more. And that's where I had my greatest successes in the beginning, by showing people how to deacidify themselves. Then rheumatism gets much better. Now, I have two more questions. Rheumatism is now again an autoimmune disease. And I had a lady here recently who takes the Coimbra protocol out into the world, associated with a high-dose D3 level. Is that something you should also consider when you have arthrosis problems, this D3? Yeah. Really? Of course. I know the Coimbra protocol. I'm not surprised. <laughs> that is... I wouldn't have mentioned that because it's much too narrow for me. Uh, yes, of course, much too narrow. It's, it's a tiny droplet in the hole. I reveal all my secrets in my training. I put a very high dose of vitamin D in an oily form into the joint when I do this injection. This is also a factor. And regular measurements, of course, yeah. Good. Just one last question. There are always such dietary supplement manufacturers. They preach with the swallowing of this product, which goes to the cell, where there are also chondroitin, sulfate, and other substances in it, you can treat arthrosis without any problems. I'm very skeptical about that. And I'd like to hear what you have to say about such dietary supplements that don't act selectively here and also don't change the diet. But you just swallow and you're fine. Exactly. Chondroitin sulfate, glucosamine sulfate are the two substances that are offered in the joint plus tablet, or God knows what, there are thousands of them. These are individual substances that the cartilage needs and builds into itself in order to ensure its turgor, its plasticity. But that alone won't cure arthrosis. It's just two things that you give. Or the molasses, the pure molasses of sugarcane and such. What is that? The molasses. That also works because it has a lot of minerals, which then have a deacidifying effect. The difference between the molasses and the sugar is that all the molasses is gone from the sugar, but the molasses is full of minerals. That's why it works so well. But these are individual means. Just using individual means alone is not enough. OK, and even when swallowing, it's all going through the stomach. That's a long way from my knees. So it's almost homeopathic. 
Yeah, well, the substances are being taken up, but that's not a broad enough therapy. We also give gluco glucosamine sulfate and chondroitin sulfate. We, we do give that, but only as one part. The base remedies are much more important. Thank you very much, dear Professor Dr. Thomas Rao. Dear viewers, we started telling you the story today about arthritis with pain. They can be treated without any problems and then over to arthrosis, where there's almost nothing left and the pain is very acute. But everything can be treated and an operation does not always seem to make sense. And I just tell myself before really taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut, one should consider all possibilities to leave the body as it is before any artificial joints come and the milieu is never changed. So there is actually a good chance that at some point, a next construction site, some other joint will ultimately be affected again. That's why I can only appeal here. Please see a biological doctor if you have problems, such as a clinic that is well versed in it that can really do it. Get some advice before actually having an operation. A second opinion doesn't cost much. That was it. All the best to you for the future. Pain-free walking. And, and see you next time.